comme ça. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. Tonight, the Lord is coming your way. Mighty power, transformation, salvation, healing, and health in your body tonight in Jesus' name. I will receive. I will receive. Your miracle gets to you tonight in Jesus' name. Father, a God, maker, creator, we love you. And we thank you. We know that you know everyone here. Your love, your mercy, your power, touch every life. Give us the blessing we need. And we pray our lives will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Give a better amen. The Lord confirm your miracle. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we're coming to John. We're learning about Jesus. Jesus, the all-sufficient one. We dealt already with John chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Today, I come to John chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6. Look at chapter 4. Verse 25, the woman says unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. The Messiah is coming. That's what she said. Which is called the Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. What faith? She had in the coming Lord. And she didn't know she was right there. In the presence of Christ, Messiah. He didn't know that her salvation was nearer than she thought. Her healing was nearer than she thought. And the abundant life, eternal life that Christ brought, she didn't know it was nearer than she thought. Are you there tonight? You, do you know how near salvation is to you? Your salvation is near. Because your Savior is near. Your healing is near. Because your healer is near. And your deliverance is so near. Because your deliverer is near. Look at verse 26. Verse 26, Jesus says unto her, I that speak unto thee, I am he. Tonight, you will know him. Tonight, you will experience him. And what had looked far away will come near to you tonight in Jesus' name. Let me go to chapter 5. In chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus says unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. That's what Christ did that followed after what he said, rise tonight, somebody there is rising from the wheelchair. Somebody there is throwing the walking stick away. Somebody there is getting miracle healing tonight in Jesus' name. Rise, take up your bed and walk. What happened? Look at verse 9. And immediately, immediately, that's your miracle. How your miracle will come tonight. The man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Look at chapter 6, verse 63. In chapter 6, verse 63, it is the spirit, the quickness that makes alive. The flesh profited nothing. 
the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Notice that the words that I speak to you, the word of Christ, the word of Jesus going through the microphone, going through a servant, when he gets to you, it enters your ear, enters your heart, and then builds faith in you, life will come to you. Spirit, spiritual life will come to you tonight. I'm talking to you on Jesus, the healer, the health of the whole man. Jesus, the healer of the whole man. Whole man, yes. There's a spirit in man, he'll heal your spirit. There's a soul of man, he'll heal your soul. There is the body, he'll heal your body. Body, soul, and spirit tonight, total healing for you. For me. For me. Tonight, there'll be miracle healing. Miracle power, miracle demonstration in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus, the healer and the health for the whole man. Look at point one here. Point one is the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of the world. Number two is the minister. Curing incurable sicknesses by his word. Number three, the manna sent from heaven to strengthen us, to strengthen you, strengthen everyone for our work. We're walking, walking to Zion. We're walking, walking to heaven. We're walking, and it's the word that gives us strength, stamina, that gives us everything we need so that we can walk safe and walk assuredly unto that eternal promised land. Let's come to number one. Number one is the Messiah. The Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of the world. I've read it this before. Let me read again in John chapter 4. Reading from verse 25. The woman says unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. A woman, a woman that had some challenges in her life. And she came to draw water at the well in the afternoon. Normally, the people of that place, of all the surrounding, they had that well to draw from. But they normally came either early in the morning when it was to school or very late in the evening. But she didn't come in the morning. She didn't come in the evening. She had some reproaches in her life. Everybody looked down on her. Everybody thought she wasn't quite a good woman, a neat woman, a woman that you show up with other people in society. There were things in her life that people looked down on, condemned. In short, they forgot their own sin and they focused on her sinful life. That's why she came when she knew no other person will be there. That's why she came when the people to reproach her, belittle her, look down her, will not be there to say, huh, what kind of life are you living? What kind of life is this? She came at that time, but although the others were not there, Jesus was there. Jesus had been here waiting for you. He knew you were coming. He knew that woman was coming. And he knew that that woman would come at such an appointed time, you don't know, but Jesus has appointment with you tonight. Appointment for your salvation. Appointment for your healing. Appointment for your miracle. And so Jesus said, because the woman will not talk to Jesus, Jesus started the conversation. 
Jesus initiated the conversation because you will not talk to him. You say, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to talk to God. I don't know how to get the attention of Christ. If you don't know how to get his attention, he will get your attention. And he'll get you talking to him. And when you talk to him and he talks to you, the end will be you have his salvation. And as they made the conversation, and Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, I would have, you would have asked, and I will give you the water of life, living water, eternal life, salvation, forgiveness, a new life I would have given you. And she said, but you don't have anything to draw with. And Jesus said, when you drink this water, natural You'll thirst again, but I'm going to give you water that you will not thirst for the dirty life anymore. You will not thirst for the impure life anymore. You will not thirst for the defiled, defiling life anymore. Oh, she said, give me this water that I may not come here to draw anymore. And Jesus just led her step by step and then said, okay, I'll give you, but go call your husband. Oh, the, man, the woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, that's right, that's right. Because you've had five, one, two, three, four, Five. And the one you are staying with now, you didn't even bother to do any ceremony now because we repeated over and over. It's not us, man. And the woman said, you appear to be a prophet. If you could know that, you are a prophet. Yes, he is, but he's more than a prophet. And he knows everything in your life. He knows every secret thing you've done. He knows everything you might be hiding. You don't need to hide. He's not here to condemn you. He's here to cleanse you up. I didn't hear your amen there. Yeah. So, there's no point hiding. It's like a person getting to a doctor and hiding what she wants treated. Why, why would you hide? It's like a person going to a rich man who is going to give him much money that he needs and is hiding his poverty. Uh, why are you hiding? We come to Christ, we don't hide. And so the woman said, you are a prophet. And, and eventually she said, I know the greatest of prophets, the greatest of seers, the greatest of manifestation of power is coming. His name, his title is Emmanuel. I know Emmanuel is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And in verse 26, Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto you, I am he. He who the Messiah, he who the Savior, he who the healer, he who the deliverer, he who the giver of eternal life. And he said, wait two or three, 200, 300, 2,000, 3,000 or more are gathered in my name. There I am in their midst. Is Jesus here tonight? Yeah. Is he by your side there tonight? Yeah. Is your savior here tonight? Yeah. Is your healer here tonight? Yeah. Is the miracle worker here tonight? Yeah. It's right there by your side. And the time, any time, as we call on him, he will forgive your sin. I said he will forgive your sin. It will break the yoke of sin out of your life. It will heal you. It will deliver you. It will set you free. 
When? 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 Praise the Lord. Your salvation comes to you tonight. Eventually, she left her water pot. She said, you can have my pot. You can have all the water you want. You know, she was resisting before, but now she surrendered. She surrendered her heart, her life, her pot, everything she had, and said, I belong to Jesus now. Went back to the town and told the people in the town. He said, you will, it will be difficult for you to know what I saw today, what I met today. She was ashamed before of her life, but now shame is gone. She was hiding, and she went alone to the well. Now she's no more hiding. Life has changed. Your life will change. Meeting Christ, having real encounter with Christ, Changed his life. And eventually she brought all those people, men and women, great multitude, unto Christ. And Christ was still waiting. And now we learn in verse 42. In verse 42, and they said unto the woman, now we believe. Not because of thy saying. We believe. Not, be not just because of what you have said. For we have heard him ourselves. It's coming to you tonight. You've heard what I said, but you go beyond what I said. And you say, I'll see him for myself. I'll touch him for myself. I will experience him for myself. And then you can join all these people that are saying, we have heard him ourselves and we know that this is indeed the Christ the savior of the world they had personal encounter tonight you'll have personal encounter with Jesus they had personal experience today you'll have personal experience with Jesus they had an encounter they had an experience. They had an evidence. Evidence. They said, we know. There's no shadow of doubt in our heart. Now we know you have the evidence in your life tonight in Jesus' name. You'll meet the Savior, the Messiah, the Christ, and your life will turn around for the better. My life. My life. Will turn around. For the better. Because. I encounter. Jesus. Lord. Savior. Tonight. Amen. Look at number two. Number two. We're not talking about the minister. Curing. Incurable sicknesses. By. His word. Here we come to John chapter 5. We're reading from verse 5. And a certain man was there which had infirmity 30 and 8 years. Infirmity. That word infirmity actually means sickness. It means impotence. It means impossibility. To rise, to walk, to live a normal life. It means being bedridden. That the fellow had been there so sick, she could not cater for herself. So sick, she could not move with freedom to the places she wanted to go. Sin had done its worst in his life. Because now it brought sickness that made him to just stay there and no helper. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie down there. Thank God. If I lie down there, helpless, Jesus, I see you, is coming your way. You see this man, 
he couldn't go to Christ, and Christ came to him. You are blind. You don't know where to find Jesus. Jesus is coming to you tonight. You are so hidden, bedridden, and you couldn't come to Christ. Christ is coming to you tonight. You are in the wheelchair. You are looking here and there, helpless, hopeless. Where do I go? How can I get there? Don't worry. Stay where you are. Jesus will get to you tonight. Deaf and dumb. What are they doing? What are they saying? All these, de all these crowd. Why are they here? Don't worry. At the mention of the name of Jesus at the end of the meeting, you'll know because you'll hear, you'll speak. Are you still there? The deaf will hear. The dumb will speak. Infirmity. Whatever impotence you have, whatever impossibility you have, possibility, power, health, healing, miracle, coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. When Jesus saw him lie, I knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He says unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Wilt thou be made whole? Every question Jesus asked, carried the answer, carried the solution. Jesus knew what he was going to do. He knew the height and the length and the breadth of his power. He knew the possibilities of what he could do. And the question is not to test him, to taunt him. The question is not to torture him. There you are. You're looking for wholeness. Will you be made whole? The question is to open his mind up to say the healer has come. Whatever question we're asking you tonight is to open up your mind. Your healer has come. My healer has come. He will heal you. Wilt thou be made whole? Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and the impotent man, the one that had infirmity, is called the impotent man, the paralyzed man, the helpless man, the unhealthy man, the bedridden man. He answered him, Sir, I have no man. If you have Jesus, you have more than enough. I have no man. Look at Jesus. Jesus is for you. The healer is for you. The defender is for you. The destroyer of every work of the devil is for you tonight. Miracle worker is for you. Provider for you. The man said, I have no man. When the water is troubled, he was still looking at the water, but the one greater than the healing water is now here. The one that is greater than the water in the bottle is now here. The one that is greater than the water in your keg is now here. This is the healer from heaven. He said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am making effort to come, another step it down before me. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and Jesus says unto him. Jesus says unto him. He didn't have to, you know, talk to him and preach to him and lift up his face and, you know, the preaching, preaching, preaching before the healing. No, he's the healer. He can heal after preaching. He can heal during the preaching. He can heal without preaching. That's why I'm sure tonight you're going to be healed. Because he never fails. The same yesterday, 
today and forever is yours tonight. Say it's mine tonight. The healing is mine because the healer is mine. The salvation is mine because the Savior is mine. The deliverer is mine, therefore the deliverance is mine. No way you can escape the miracle, the touch, the power of God in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And so Jesus said, rise, take up thy bed, and walk, rise. That's exactly what he said, I have no man to pick me up. To make me rise and to even get me to the water. And Jesus said, What no man can do for you, I give you the power, do it. You'll do what you have not been able to do before. When it says, Open your eyes, a miracle will meet you right there. As you open your eyes and you will see. When he says, rise, you couldn't do that before, but Jesus is sending his word of power unto you. What you couldn't do before, at the mention of the name of Jesus, you will rise out of that wheelchair. You throw those walking sticks away, and healing, health, wholeness will come to you. Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Look at verse 9. And immediately, and immediately, and immediately. Look at that. Immediately tonight, we mentioned Jesus the healer, Jesus the savior, Jesus the deliverer. Anywhere his name goes, his miracle will follow. And when the name comes to you and gets to your heart tonight, immediately the miracle will follow. Immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And took up his bed and walked. And took up his bed and walked. Who will be the next? Who will be the next? Who will be the next? The next to experience the miracle power of Christ. The next to experience the salvation of the Lord. The next to experience the true freedom that comes from Christ. You will be the next. You will be the next. All Jesus did was to speak the word to him. And the word made him whole. All you will need is what the Lord is doing now. is sending his word to you. And the word will make you whole. Will make me whole. Will make me whole. Look at number three here. Number three here. In the manner sent from heaven to strengthen us for our work. All that we need, we get through the manner. What kind of manner? We're looking at John chapter 6, verse 48. I am the bread of life. I am the bread, not of death, the bread, not the one that will lead to weakness, the bread of life. What kind of bread is that? That Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Hey, look at verse 49. In verse 49, it says, Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Verse 50. In verse 50, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man be eat thereof and not die. 
and not die. And not die. Premature death cancelled from your life. Spiritual death cancelled from your life. Eternal death, eternal separation from God cancelled from your life. How will that happen? By receiving Christ, the bread for eternal life. The bread for spiritual life. The bread for the life of heaven on earth. Verse 51. In verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, remember, we're talking about Jesus, the bread of life. If any man, young, middle-aged, older, if any man, it's not that any man is actually generic, it's for everyone. Any man, any woman, anyone standing on two feet, anyone having a soul, anyone having a mind, anyone having a decision, I'm going to follow Christ. If anyone eat of this bread, it shall live forever. It shall live forever. That's another way of saying he will have everlasting life. He will live forever. He will have eternal life. He will live forever. He will have the God kind of life. The God kind of life. There's the God kind of life. There's the Adam kind of life. There's the God kind of life. There's an earthly kind of life. There's the God kind of life. There is the animal life. The animal that just eats and sleeps, and then eventually one day it's gone. Short. Short in life. Earthly life. Does nothing conspicuous, and yet it's gone. But the God kind of life, I want that. I said that's what I want. The God kind of life, eternal life, it shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Many of them did not understand what Jesus was saying is that I'll be crucified on the cross. And my life will be given for the salvation of the whole of humanity. So that whosoever will believe will have the God kind of life. And it tells us now in verse 63. Verse 63, it tells us it is the spirit that quickens. It will quicken you. It will renew you. It will revive you. All the old dead things will pass out of your life. New life will come. Eternal life will come. Happy life will come. An exciting life will come to you tonight. Will come to me tonight. It says, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, the words that I speak unto you, the words that I speak unto you, hold on. That the word God in heaven spoke at the beginning of the world. Let there be light, the word, and there was light. Let there be the moon and the stars. He just put the word and everything came into being. The words that I speak unto you. And then when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, he sent the word and he healed them all. That the word is bringing to you today. The word you are hearing enters your ear, goes into your heart. Life will come to you. 
the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. Their spirit and their life. Wonders going to take place today. Miracles going to take place today. Salvation going to take place today. In Jesus' name. We've heard about, number one, the Messiah. We've heard, second, the minister. Ministering life, healing, wholeness unto you. Now we hear of the manna that comes to you. And you accept and you believe and you receive that soul. Everything you need from heaven will be granted to you today will be granted to me. Will be granted to me. Praise the Lord. You are blessed today. Blessed today. Blessed in Jesus. Blessed by Jesus. Blessed through Jesus. Welcome to the blessing of Jesus tonight in Jesus' name. It's about eyes closed the answer that Jesus who puts an end to sin the Messiah you know him today you have heard about him today now he's very near you open your heart you say I accept I believe eternal life will be yours and you will not die prematurely Wonderful people, wonderful amen. You will not die prematurely. You will not die like an animal. Those animals are dead and nobody remembers them anymore. You will not die like an animal. You will not die eternally forever, never to be remembered, but heaven will remember you from today as you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's bowed, it's bowed, it's bowed and eyes closed. You're giving your heart to Christ so that he'll be your Messiah, your Savior, wherever you are. Just raise up your hand. Salvation has come. The Savior is near the salvation is near. Just raise up that hand. Amen. And God bless you. I said God bless you. If you are raising up your hand, you stand up where you are. You are standing up for Jesus because you are receiving eternal life, everlasting life, the very life of God in man who believes you're standing up saying, I receive him as my Messiah. I receive him as my Savior. I receive him as the giver of everlasting eternal life. Anywhere you are, raise up that hand. You are listening over the television. You are listening on the radio. You are online, social media, or you are in a congregation. So anywhere in the world. It's coming to you right now. Raise up your hand and stand up and say, Lord, I've heard of you. I'm standing up because I accept, I believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, and I receive your salvation right now. Keep on standing. Just say in few words, Lord, I've heard you speaking to me. You're my Savior. You're my Messiah. I accept. I believe. I know my sins are now forgiven. And I have the joy of sins forgiven, the joy of salvation, the joy of a new life. Believe that. Confess that. It's yours. I'm praying with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
your word assures us that whosoever comes to Christ, he will in no wise push away, cast off. All these have come believing that this Jesus is the Messiah and that he brings eternal life, everlasting life, salvation, the life of God in man. Lord, I pray that they have come to you. Receive them. Receive them. Forgive them. Grant them your salvation. And let the joy of salvation, the experience of salvation, the evidence of salvation come into their lives right now. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. It is done. We receive. We believe. We have got the salvation of the Lord right now. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing here, there, everywhere, online, wherever you are in the world. You've been with us during the message. You've given your life to the Lord. Keep on standing. Our counselors are coming right there. And he'll, you know, ask you for your name. And joyfully, you give them the details they are asking. Because now, you have forgiveness, freedom, you have salvation. We call on our moderating um, overseer to help us through at this time. Thank you. Counselors, please spread yourself all over. Keep on standing. You have made decision for Christ. Counselors, please spread yourself to the right, to the left, to the back. There are people spread all over to the second field. To the road, please spread yourself. Give them the right information so that we can help you. Remember, you have given your life to Christ. So give them the right information. Counselors, please write clearly their names, their address, their phone numbers very clearly. Make sure 11 digits And all over the world, all the congregation, please counsel us, attend to people who have made decision for Christ. And if you are connected through the social media, there is a link below the system you are using. Click that link and provide the information in the form that is in that link. And if you are connecting via the radio or the television you have made decision for Christ please send your information
indicating that you have given your life to Jesus. Please counsel us. Spare yourself. Don't leave anybody unattended to. Every one of them is important. Don't leave anybody out. And when you take their details, there is a package from our Father in the Lord. Please ensure that you give them the package. If you didn't get the package, please indicate. After you have given your details, indicate and request for the package. There are people spread all over. Go to us, the back to the second field. Go to us the road everywhere. And remember those who have given their life to Christ yesterday and even today. There will be a lunch hour with Jesus tomorrow afternoon by 2 p.m. by 2 p.m. tomorrow. And the meeting point will be under the Malina trees by my right-hand side. Under the Malina trees by my right-hand side is where the lunch hour with Jesus will be taking place tomorrow. By the grace of God, you will be served your lunch in that place. Counselors, please, can you move faster? And if you are true with your session, the supervisors can indicate you raise the flag to indicate that you are true with your session. And if you are true, move all the counselors Move them to other sessions to give helping hand. So you're waiting patiently, waiting with great expectation. Tonight will be your night. A night you will live to remember. A night, you will experience the mighty touch of God. Be getting ready, telling God what you want him to do for you. Counselors, please, don't leave anybody out. Ensure all the informations are correctly taken. I can see the great expectation. I can see the task and the desire. I can see you sitting down quietly and waiting. You are expecting something from heaven.
counselors, please indicate if you are true with your session. Lift up the flag with you to indicate that you are true. Please spread to the back. Spread to the far right. Spread to the far left towards the road. Spread to the back, even to the second field. There are a multitude of people over there have given um, their life to Christ. Counselors, please. If the people can feel they sleep by themselves, please allow them to do so. But help those who cannot feel it by themselves. If you are true, the supervisors, can you raise up the flats? To indicate that you are true. In the front, my left hand side, to the right hand, far back. Let's move quickly. But ensure you are taking the right information. Give them the right information. Give them your address, your home address, so that the love of Christ can be extended to you. Your phone numbers, your details. So that you can be so that you can be helped to stand and to grow in the Lord. Ensure the packages are given to the people after you have taken their details. Supervisors, if you are true with your own session, please, can you indicate? Let's move a little bit. Okay, in the front by the right. You are true, please move. The counselors, where you are true, move them to other sessions. We still have some people that are yet to be attended to. If you are true with your session, please move to the other sessions. Lift up your flag if you are true. Thank you. I can see by my far right, by my left. As you are waiting, those of us who are sitting down, wait in great expectation. Be telling the Lord what you want him to do for you. Tonight, you cannot go back empty-handed. You cannot go back the same. You cannot go back with your problems. The Lord is touching you tonight.
supervisors, if you are true, by my left hand side, can you wave the flag? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. At the front, at the back, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you stand upon your feet? Your miracle time has come. Great power is touching you. Anointing that breaks the yoke is coming your way. I bring up the, the servants of the Lord, our Father in the Lord, uh, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. Williams Kumuli. Thank you. God bless you. Everybody, amen. This is your time. Your time of healing. Your time of deliverance. Your time of miracle. Remember, he speaks the word. The healing takes place. And immediately, you see it in your body. You see it in your life. You are healed. I see your healing coming to you right there today. Where are you? You raise up one hand. And you lay the other hand on the place, if you can, where you have the challenge. And we pray now. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, you are healed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with assurance. We come with confidence that the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, will not fail. And it will not be partial. We're asking, Lord, send forth your power to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Whatever the infirmity, whatever the sickness, Whatever the disease, touch everyone, heal everyone now in Jesus' name. Take the madness away. Take the long-standing disease away. Take every sickness away. Healing for everyone. Blind eyes. Open right there now in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb, everything is cleared. Hear and speak in Jesus' name. And those who are lame, paralyzed, impotent, Lord, let your power enter into them, raise them up, strengthen them. Heal them now in Jesus' name. Any long-standing problem of any name or description, Lord, send your healing virtue to everyone. Heal everyone. Set everyone free. And break the yoke in every life. Lord, in agreement with your promise, I say, all the works of the devil in anyone, everyone destroy everything destroyed right now. Healing everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Freedom everywhere. The breaking of every yoke everywhere. Lord, to the right, to the left, to the center, and online everywhere. Manifest your miracle power to everyone. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Check up yourself. You see the miracle power already manifested there. 